Hey, what is going on guys? Danny here. Welcome back to the channel and I hope you're all doing well. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at some leaks and rumors surrounding AMD's upcoming Zen 3 CPUs for the desktop. As you all might know, AMD had posted on their Twitter account earlier this month that they will be announcing new products for the desktop, which include CPUs and GPUs, or at the very least, be unveiling them with their respective dates. The Zen 3 announcement is supposed to be held on the 8th of October, which is about a week away, so the date is approaching fast. And whenever a launch is imminent or relatively close, you're going to start seeing some leaks and rumors spread around the internet. With AMD Zen 3, they're no exception here, and we're starting to see some information trickle out as we get closer to their announcements. Although I do have to say that AMD is being quite tight-lipped about these new generation of products, both on the CPU and GPU front. So the first leak comes from Tim Apisak from Twitter, who is a known PC hardware leaker and benchmark database data miner. He actually posted a couple of results from the Ashes of the Singularity benchmark database, and this benchmark result showed a Ryzen 7 5800X processor. Well, first off, we, know, we now know that AMD is most definitely skipping the 4000 series naming SKU for these new Zen 3 CPUs, which I guess can be kind of confusing, but I'm assuming they just didn't want the naming scheme to conflict with the 4000G based processors, the APUs which are out in the market. Well, technically they're only available from system integrators and OEMs, but this differentiation would mean that the 5000 series CPUs imply they're based on Zen 3, whereas the 4000 series are still based on Zen 2. It's not a huge deal, but you know, it can be kind of annoying when trying to look at things from a consistent perspective. Looking at the results, well, the first one shows the average CPU frame rate to be only around 63 FPS, which seems kind of low, but then we have another screenshot of him comparing another result to a result from the 10 from a 10900k system and here we can see the 5800x is quite a bit faster than the 10900k when we look at the averages for all the batches the 5800x has a frame rate of 133.6 whereas the 10900k has a frame rate of around 114.9 so that's just a difference of 16 percent which is definitely notable and if you look further at the batches separately you can see that in the normal batch, the 5800X is 22% faster, but then the margins do close as you get to the heavier batches with the last result only showing a difference of around 14%, which is still a considerable difference. Now, what I will say about this is that take these results with a grain of salt. Ashes of the Singularity is just one of those that's very well optimized. It's well threaded and it's kind of like Doom Eternal in the sense where the discrepancies and differences you, you see won't really translate the same to other games or games that are more commonly played. It's also been known to be quite memory intensive so just having higher frequency memory can also boost performance quite a bit. So we need more information here as to how the test system was set up. With that said though if you just go back and take a look at some results from their database and find some that have a 3800X for example, so an 8 core 16 thread CPU from the previous generation, this should give us a more apples to apples comparison. And here you guys can see that the 3800X achieved an average frame rate of 105.4, which isn't too far from the 10900K, but when you compare that to the 5800X's score, that's a whopping 27% improvement. So if these benchmark results are legitimate, then we could be looking at a drastic improvement in gaming performance from these next gen Zen 3 based CPUs. Use. An increase like this could result in AMD going from trailing Intel to all of a sudden now being ahead of them in gaming performance. This could be due to a few various reasons including changes AMD will have made to the architecture and process advancements which we'll discuss more later on in the video but before that I want to go over another leak. The second leak pertains to another Ryzen 5000 SKU. This one comes from WCCF Tech who are sourcing a YouTube channel by the name of PC Welt. I've actually never heard of these guys, but that's probably because they're a German channel, so I don't obviously watch those channels. But in regards to the information that was given out, they're reporting that the Ryzen 9 5900X is going to be the fastest chip offering for some time, meaning there won't be a 16 core processor in the 5000 series lineup at the beginning. Now, I've also heard another rumor like this as well, where AMD are going to be following the same sort of release schedule for their other SKUs where we won't be seeing a 16 core part until later on in the year or perhaps until quarter one of 2021. Similarly to how the 3950X was released in late 2019, whereas parts like the 3900X and 3800X and 3700X were released in the middle of 2019. And I also believe the 3600X and 3600 also came out around that time as well. 
This could be due to a whole bunch of reasons. The yields may not be as abundant and production facilities could be operating on limited capacity, thus resulting in lower volume. Remember, we're still in the middle of a pandemic. Every single industry has been affected and logistics have been severely impacted. Just look at what happened with NVIDIA recently. So I could see AMD for now announcing the 5900X, 5800X, and 5700X, just like how they did with Zen 2. But we know for sure that there will be a 16 core part for the Vermeer family as Igor did find some OPNs back in August which I did cover as well. Now as for specs, core counts should mirror what we got from the 3000 series. So the 5900X should have 12 cores and 24 threads and we already saw the 5800X shown to have 8 cores and 16 threads from the Ashes benchmark. So no real surprise here, I wasn't expecting AMD to increase core counts drastically again for this new generation. They're still leveraging TSMC 7 nanometer node, albeit a more tweaked version of it with 7 nanometers plus. So it's not like these chiplet packages were going to get any smaller and provide the additional room to cram more cores. Don't expect more cores for the mainstream until we get another node leap, say, to 5 nanometers. Nonetheless, if it caps out at 16 cores again, I have no issues with this, as most consumers probably don't even need more than 6 cores right now, and games still aren't even taking full advantage of 8 cores anyways, but maybe that might change since these next gen consoles fin finally are on board to having 8 cores, and 8 actual true, true cores that is. Furthermore, they claim that the Ryzen 9 5900X will get a substantial frequency boost, hitting that big 5GHz mark. Now this of course would be a 400MHz increase over the 3900X, and a 300MHz increase over the 3900X. T. And I can see it happening. As I mentioned with the 16 core Vermeer part that was discovered, it had a 4.9 GHz boost. So for AMD to have finally reached the 5 GHz mark thanks to process maturity and making some architectural tweaks, it wouldn't be too far fetched. However, we know that clock speeds aren't everything and stuff like IPC and latency also play a huge role in terms of performance as well. With Zen 3, they're looking at a 20% IPC improvement, which will be huge. That's an even bigger jump than what Zen 2 brought over Zen Plus. I believe it was a 13 or 15% improvement there, so for AMD to be able to make a jump like this again in terms of IPC with another generation will be impressive, and this should significantly boost single core performance once again with higher clock speeds and higher IPC brought to the table. You should be looking at a 25 to 30% improvement in terms of single core performance. Like if a Ryzen 9 3900X gets around 525 single core score and Cinebench R20, then a R9 5900X could score around 650. So wow, oh, but all of this still remains to be seen. The other thing I wanted to mention was that latency still needs to be drastically reduced with this new generation as well. High clock speeds and high IPC won't completely let Ryzen edge out Intel in regards to gaming performance as games are quite latency sensitive. However, we're hearing that with Zen 3, AMD will finally unify the L3 cache and also expand the CCXs from 4 cores to 8 cores. You see, with Ryzen 1000 and 3000 and the 2000 series, having 4 cores in a core complex or CCX meant that if there was a moment where information needed to be passed outside of the CCX to another CCX, then that would incur a latency penalty. With 8 cores in a CCX, this should help drastically lower latency as well, as there will be much less travel time for the information to be processed through. Now, finally, they mentioned that the TDP of the 5900X will also be higher too, and quite drastically at that, where the 5900X will have a 150 watt TDP rating as opposed to the 105 watts that we saw with the 12 core predecessor, the 3900X, and even the 16 core 3950X. But we'll have to wait and see and uh, look at what AMD uh, shows us when they announce the processors to actually validate this claim and uh, do more testing with it. As for release dates, we know they'll make an announcement on the 8th, but whether the processors will actually go on sale that day, shortly after, or a month later is still up in the air. However, we are hearing some rumors from a few credible places, one of whom is Juan Usmus, who is the creator of the Ryzen DRAM calculator and clock tuner programs, and he's claiming that AMD will release the 5900X and 5800X on the 20th of October, which is only 12 days after the announcement and that Navi will launch somewhere between the 15th and 20th of November. Now Computerbase, who are a well-regarded German PC hardware review site, which I use often for my performance analysis, are also claiming to have received some information that AMD will launch the processors either on the 20th of October or the 27th. So if places like these are giving out information and their dates line up together, then you can be fairly certain that it's probably legitimate. 
Also, I'm happy to hear that we won't have to wait like a month for these processors to hit store shelves, but we'll have to wait and see. So that'll do it for this video. We've only got about a week until these processors are unveiled, but I expect some more leaks to come out in the next few days, so keep your eyes peeled and stay tuned. I hope you guys found this video to be informative and helpful. Let me know your thoughts down below. Check out the video description on ways to support the channel and for my other videos. If you guys are interested in more content like this, then make sure you're subscribed. Thanks for watching, take care, and I'll see you guys in the next one.